Hello. Who's there? Who's going to be joining us first this evening? My new notification is gone out because I just received one. Yay! Who's there? Knock, 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 knock. Who's there with us this evening? Hello, Pastor Nikki. You're the first. Rochelle White. Good evening. Good evening, Pastor Nikki. Hello, Esther. How are you? Good evening. Chinwei. Hello. Hello, Daniel. How are you this evening? Oh, thank you, Pastor Nikki. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. As you're coming in, you know what to do. Start sharing immediately so that others can join us. Thank you, thank you for joining us this evening. I said that, but I like to say it again as people are coming in. So, good evening. Good evening, Esther. Good evening, Pastor Ernest. How are you? Good evening. So, start sharing, guys. I can see one person has shared. Pastor Nikki is an upstarter. She's already shared. Afola B. Maya, good evening. Jane, good evening. Darlene Madu, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining. Please start sharing as you're coming. I know a few people have shared already. So, if you haven't shared, please share now. And also, you can start inviting your friends as well. So, as you're sharing with a button, you can come back, go back, and also invite friends and click on a few friends. Good evening, Ifoma. Good evening, <laughs> Prof. Daniel. Good evening, Professor Daniel. How are you this evening? Thank you guys for joining. Please share. Okay, so before we start, let me start talking about the contest. So the sooner we start, the more time we would have and the more questions we will be able to address today with Dr. Sunday. Hello, Kenny. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so the contest, guys, you know the contest is amazing. You know I am excited about the contest. If you haven't joined us before, you don't know what I'm talking about, you would know in a few minutes. But the contest, I'm excited because they're great, great prizes to be won. There are five in fact. So let's start with the first one. So the first prize to be won is Pastor Sunday's books. You already, if you don't know, let me tell you, Pastor Sunday has written some great books. And not only that he's written one or two or three, he's written hundreds. But we've got some fantastic titles in English. So if you're an English speaker, which is most of you listening to me right now, then this is a contest for you because you can win books that are in English. It's written books in over 17 languages, but we have English and we have other languages if you request that, but these are in English. Then there's another thing you can win, a Skype talk with Dr. Sunday, one hour just for you. You and Dr. Sunday will spend time talking via Skype for a whole hour. I did that and that was our first conversation and this is what led me here and I can't forget that day because I think I made the decision from that time that this is a great guy that I need to speak to with insight, with knowledge from God and it's all about the kingdom. So it was a great conversation and I'm sure that whoever wins this would experience even better than I have. So and the third prize is uh, be Pastor Sunday's personal visitor. So, that means you'll be traveling wherever you are, you'll be traveling over here to Kiev. So, you can win a prize where you will come over here in Kiev and be Pastor Sunday's personal visitor. And it's another prize, lunch with Pastor Sunday in Kiev. Lunch with Pastor Sunday is not just lunch, it's always a feast. You don't have one thing, you have many things on the table. So that's something to definitely look forward to, especially to a foodie like me. So if you're a foodie, lunch with Pastor Sunday. And it's not just going to be eating. You're not going to be eating in silence. Obviously, there will be time to discuss, to talk, and also gain some knowledge and wisdom from him face to face. So this is a great price as well. And then there's a personal question time. What we'll be having tonight, you will be having your own with Dr. Sunday. One-to-one -one personal question time. You can ask him whatever you like. 
So I think this is fantastic prices and I'm sure that you would agree with me. So this is a great contest for you to enter. So what do you need to do to enter the contest? Hey, okay. Number one, the eight categories. So nobody can say that they will not find something that suits them. So I'll start to mention them one by one. The first one is seven best doers. So seven people can win this. So it's not just one person, seven people can win this prize, which is people who've, who have accomplished the most projects after listening to Dr. Sunday's teaching. So from listening to Dr. Sunday over the last year or so, or whenever you've been listening to him, if he's impacted you and you've achieved a lot of projects, or you've achieved one or two significant projects, then this is, a, this is a category for you to enter. If you can document that and send it to us with pictures or videos, whatever you want to do, then send it to us. This is your category. Enter this. Then number two, seven men's most grateful performers. According, according to Dr. Sunday's gratitude scale, which is below the contest details, which is that I posted it all day. I posted it on all our platforms today. So if you're on any groups, you would see it. And it's also on Dr. Sunday's um, page as well. So seven people who are grateful performers. There's, there's a gratitude scale that you can check, which has got 11 levels of gratitude. Zero is thank you. So thank you is zero. The 11 categories. So if you're in the top three, top three of the gratitude scale, then you can enter this and you also have to document that and let us know how you accomplished being in the top three. And then there's another one, which is six most zealous book readers. If you're a zealous book reader, if you love reading books and you've read most of Dr. Sunday's book, then let us know. And also let us know what you've learned from that book. Document that and put it in details so that we would understand what you've learned, what you've taken out of it, the values in it. You know Dr. Sunday never writes a book without a purpose. There's a reason for it. There's one, something, a message that he's trying to pass on. And if you understand that message and you can put it in writing, then send that to us. This is another category for you. Then there's another one. This is six best followers of students of Pastor Sunday. Yes, I would say everybody should enter this because if you've listened to a large proportion, a large amount of Dr. Sunday's uh, broadcast, audio, teaching, anything that, or even read a lot of his articles, which is written loads on his blog, then this is one for you. And you can send us notes of what you've learned, then please enter these categories. There, this category. Then there's another one, another one which is six great DSA teaching promoter. Yesterday I made a blunder with this, which is I just said six DSA promoter, and DSA gave a long explanation of it's not about him, it is about the kingdom, it's about the teaching. So get this right, as I have today, I have received the Holy Spirit and deliverance from saying DSA promoters. No, six DSA teaching promoters if you're one of those people then please enter this people who succeeded to do the largest number of shares of dsa teaching so go on youtube or go even on dsa they are, they are prom their own promoters now that's why i used yesterday the whole of the day to tell you that they they are promoting themselves yes so you pro did you hear that again let me repeat right this is not promoting DSA. This is promoting DSA's teaching. And in doing so, you're promoting yourself. You're developing yourself. And also helping other people to learn and develop. So this is not about DSA person. It is about the teaching, the knowledge that is sharing with us. So as you're sharing this, um, you would be a great promoter of the teachings. All right? So... And then there is another category, which is our seven best creator of five minutes videos. So create a five minutes video of the lessons that you've learned from a series that DSA has done. So you have, you have at least tens of, series, tens of uh, series that you can look, playlist. So if you go on YouTube, which is Sunday at the Larger Official, you see the playlist. If you look, watch, just select any of the titles that you like or the categories, listen to them, and then document them. What did you learn? Do a five-minute video. Share it with other people and also share it with us so that we know what you're talking about. 
and then you are entered in this category. Then there's another one which is five best DSA video biography creator. This will be fun. I'm looking forward to this one because this biography is so interesting and you know, if you're able to, anyone can do this. I used to say if you're a graphic designer or you're interested in creation, creating or art, that's when you can do this. Anyone can actually do it. There are lots of tools that you can use on your phone to create his biography. So just add his pictures, information about him. You can talk, you can add music, whatever way you want to do it, I'm just suggesting. So you, if you can do that, then this is a category for you. Just do a biography, video biography that other people can watch and learn about Dr. Sunday. And then there's another one, which is number six, which goes with the time that we're in right now, which is the Golden Jubilee. Yay! Only a few days to go. And we'll be celebrating in a dance, 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 dance mood. So this is the outstanding DSA Golden Jubilee congratulatory messages. I have seen a number of messages and they're all fantastic. So keep them coming, but keep them coming with zeal. Try and put all your messages, your, um, your testimonial in one video. Put it all together. Do it however you want to create something. You can even you can even act if you want to. I like act, have something creative. Just do whatever you need to do and send it to us. It would be great to have your video. So that's it. That's the eight categories. But you can see all of them on our, on our pages or group. You can check them out. And I'm sure you're going to have fun. As I have, I'm having fun just reading them. And you will have fun actually doing that and sending it. And I'll be, I will be sharing it as you're sharing too. So thank you guys for listening. I'm going to ask Dr. Sunday to say hello so that you know he's here. You already know that he's here. So here he is. Hello, everybody. Greetings. Thank you, thank you, sir. So guys, let's get started. Was oh, there anything I'm missing? Let me say a little bit hello. I feel like I have neglected you over the last few days. So let me say hello. So, um, somebody said, I don't love reading. That's fine. There are other categories, darling. Hello, everyone. Saying, okay. Hello, everyone. Ooh. Okay, I think it's all hello at the moment. So, I'll leave the reading to later. Let me just read the question and let's kick start today or this evening. So, actually, before I do that, let's talk about um, yesterday. Yesterday was very interesting. I'm sure you all had a good laugh on my own expense, but it's okay. I like it. I like laughter, even if it's not from, even if it's at my expense, it's okay. So, anyway, um, there's a lot of lessons in yesterday, but I'll just talk about the last bit, which is about DSA. The question that was asked was about DSA and all his goals that he has. DSA explains us as only as accomplished five percent of what he has in mind to do. And we look at him like somebody that have achieved a lot, which was a big surprise to me. And in that five percent that is just achieved, he's he's got ninety-five percent remaining. So um he, some the person also asked that with um the way that is very open hearted, he allows so many people that are not professional that needs help to come, we give them opportunity. And most of us don't know what we're doing. And um, he said, well, that's, it's fine, he doesn't mind. Yes, there are people, there are different types of people, the people that uses him, which he doesn't mind. He actually prefers people to use him, use him as a ladder and a bridge to achieve their purpose, but not to be vicious about it, to do whatever they need to do to achieve their purpose. But however, there are lots of people that use him, he gave us a few examples, where he doesn't mind. He's like an ocean. So you can take a cup from it and drink. That ocean will never run dry. So he's okay with that. But um, the other thing that he said was that uh, he likes to give opportunities to people because uh, the world is a capitalism system, as you already know, and they give opportunities to people who already have opp opportunities. You would have gone to university, achieve a certificate before you would even have a hearing in a 
in the, any employment. Whereas he doesn't need to see that. He just needs to see your zeal. He just needs to see that you want to work. You want to do something for the kingdom. And he would allow that person, even if he doesn't see, if he sees a potential in you, he would. He gave example of that as well and how great that has been working out. And then I went on to ask that if you know, if you've only achieved 5% and your um, people around you are not uh, that... Uh, um, they're not professional, they don't really know what they're doing, they really need to get take from you rather than give. How are you going to achieve the 95% that is remaining? He said he still achieves, but what's important to him is people. It's not his, his task, not those tasks. What's more important is people. It's a really heartwarming answer, and you know, it, it took me a while to even let it, allow it to sink in because I'm thinking, I don't get it. If, you're not, if you need to achieve a goal, and you'll always talk about achieving your goals, and you're getting us, be, us that don't really have this, the right skill set, developing ourselves, using you, you being a ladder all the time. How are you ever going to get there? But he gave a very convincing answer, and I'm sure that he knows what he's doing. He's happy with people more than the, the task itself. So people development is more important to him than the task. So that was where we ended yesterday. And also, my lessons is preparation is poor, uh, poor uh, something about poor performance or lack of preparation is poor performance. I didn't prepare yesterday. I came on smiling and all that and hoping that I would make up for my time or make up for what I needed to do. But I didn't because um, I was lapsing a lot and that affected more people than me. So I learned a lot of lessons from that. So you need to learn that as well. So if you didn't watch yesterday, Go back and watch it and, you know, you will learn a lot and a lot about DSA as well. I read your comments, guys, really lovely. Your, some of you were crying and saying thank you. You don't know who DSA is, what kind of person is DSA. I was laughing because I don't know either. I'm still finding out. So let's find out together. Question time number 18 today. Can you believe day 18? <laughs> so let's get started. Oh, good evening, everyone. I felt like I was in a marathon talking there. <laughs> okay. So this question, I think, goes back to yesterday, which was, many people lose their way or value focus, ETC, the more power, success, money, and fame they get, including men of God, ETC. Can you share with us how you ensure that you won't fall into any such problem, temptation, given your upcoming increasing success and fame, especially since you have only completed 5% of your calling once on your assignment in Africa slash Nigeria? Okay, first of all, uh, before I begin to answer that question, you might need to ask it again, but uh, I wanted to say, did you notice that I'm wearing black today? Yes. And we're in black, and it has something written all over it. Rising. There is a guy that is uh, by the name, I think it's Enyes. I didn't see his hand, but I see that Enno is there. His name is Enno, and this guy is a fashion designer. A guy, he's a boy, he's a man in Belarus. That's where I used to live. That's where my ministry started, so I'm happy for him. That his ministry is starting from Belarus. He's my, I think he's my follower. I think he's a, a member of DSA family, and uh, so he just decided. I think it's just an up, up and starting designer, and um, he's doing. You know, he's producing this kind of uh, clothes and dress. So stitches projection, stitches projection. I will wear another one for him tomorrow. So he just wanted me to wear. He sent. I don't. I never met him. I don't know him. But he just sent these things down to me and said, "I believe." He's acting by faith. He said, "I believe that if you wear this, just wear it one time at least. Just wear it. If you wear it, that God will bless me. I know God will bless my business." So. It's been well taught, and I think it's a good principle he's applying there. But I just don't want God to bless him. I want to be my. I want to be myself. You see, that I always have to be a ladder. I have to be a bridge, just like we discussed on yesterday. So he didn't expect this because he sent this to me maybe last week, and today 
yesterday we were talking about being a ladder. That's just who I am. And I spoke about Esther, uh, Esther Kuganja. By the way, I want somebody to put Esther Kuganja's book there. I promise that we are going to be talking about it every day. So even if I don't remember you, my assistants, you've got to talk about Esther Kuganja's book about stigmas, stigmatization of women. We must break that stigmatization. And please go get it. Go find a video. Spread the word. Go find the, <clears throat> the picture of the book. Let's spread the word. Let's talk about it. And let's set the woman free. Now, uh, uh, so concerning these guys, I think it's called Stitches Projection. Stitches Projection. Uh, I want to say it's not enough for me just to ask God to bless you. I'm here. And this is my own way of blessing you by giving you a platform. Even though I don't know you, but I know your name is Enno now. Eno or Enno. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm wearing it specially just for people to know what is teaching projection. I, I've already spoke, spoken about you in the morning, I mean, in, the, in the earlier program today, uh, when, with the Russian program. And now I am showing you again today, I mean this evening, for people to know that there is a stitches projection somewhere in Belarus. Is is I think the guy is at is uh, is uh, participating in some show and uh, clothing show, you know, business. Uh, I think he was participating in what they call Belarusian show day or fashion day. So I, he's really active, and I want to say, well, here we are, you know. So. I'm going to, I I have another one. I'm going to wear another one tomorrow or the, the other day. And just to give you a platform. God is blessing you, yes. But apart from God blessing you, I am also blessing you by making promotion for you. So, I'm back. Uh, now, uh, to answer your question. I would like, I remember the question, but I would like you to ask again, just for people to re recall it. Okay, sorry. The question is, many people lose their ways or values slash focus ETC the moment power, success, money, and fame they get, or the more they get, including men of God ETC. Can you share with us how you ensure that you won't fall into any such problem or temptation given your upcoming increased success and fame? Especially since you have only completed 5% of your calling once on your assignment in Africa and slash Nigeria. I want to first of all remind you that I'm going to be 50. Whoever is asking that question, I want to remind the person that I'm going to be 50 this month in the next two weeks. So if this question had been asked me, before now, I would have asked. I would have answered in a different way. I would probably have answered this question the way, the very same way. The person that is asking the questionnaire, I mean, the person that is asking, the way the person that is asking want me to answer it. So, from the question, I understand that this person expects me to be able to give an answer that says that. Uh, there are ways that I want to, that I will insulate myself against down or falling, against mistakes or against falling or failing, and that uh, so she wants to know uh, what are the systems or things that I have put in place that will secure me or uh, ensure me from failing. Because a lot of people fail as a result of, uh, you know, the fame and the success that they attain in life. She's, yeah, that would have been a very easy question for me to answer before. But now that I'm 50, that's why I started by reminding you that I'm 50. Now that I'm 50, I want to answer this question in a way that you might not like or in a way that you might not expect. Uh... The question says, people often fall from grace or fail because of the enormous success they enjoy. Now, 
again, I don't want my dis my my question to I don't want my answer to disappoint you. But I want to say that again, this is not an answer for for people who want to me to say what they want me to say. This is an answer for people who want to know the mind of God. This is not an answer for people's ears or human human uh, standard. But this answer is going to be according to God's standard. And I feel this is the answer that God wants me to give at this hour, at this time. So, how do I insure myself? How do I insure myself from falling? How do I insulate myself from falling? Just like all other people are falling. Who are falling. What I want to say is that, number one, at 50, I have come to know and realize that life is plural. Life is double side, two sided. That God has created life in such a way that it is too naive of any one of us and it is too shallow minded for any one of us to look at life just one sided. Life should be looked at as a dual. Life should be looked at as a coin that has two sides. Life should be looked at as double-edged. So life is not just going to be one-dimensional. Life is actually two-dimensional. Like I said, when I was younger, when I was now 50, I could have answered this question in a different way. But now that I'm 50, I'm an old man. I'm getting older in wisdom as well. I want to say that what I've discovered about life for these 50 years of life is that life does not consist only of success. And that life is a combination of the two. Life consists of both success and failure. So what I would like to say is that those people who fail, I mean, well, first of all, let me say this, that failure, failure in the eyes of God is as important as success. Failure in the eyes of God is as important as success. So, but in our own eyes as humans, we always look at failure as negative. We always look at failure as evil. But it doesn't have to follow. Failure could be painful. Failure could be negative in our eyes. But God created both positive and negative. Just like with electricity, you need both energy, positive and negative, to be able to produce and have everything that you have right now. In fact, as a matter of fact, the Bible says it in Daniel. Says that God Himself is the one who created light and created darkness. He's the one who created day and night. He's the one who lifts up one and puts the other down. So he's the one who is responsible for elevation and he's the one who is responsible for deformment. God is, is a God of death. His wisdom is higher than ours. It's like the heavens is far from the earth. So is God's wisdom. And in a lot of places, God has said that he's the one that creates destruction and is the one that creates you know, uh, life and destruction. He's the one that creates you know, the good and the bad. So, it is going to be shallow mindedness for me to say that I only want the good 
in life. I only want exaltation in life. I only want success in life. And I don't want failure. Since God created success and failure, light and darkness, it will be presumptuous of me to say it is only light that is good. But God in Genesis, in Genesis says everything he created is good. Which means God presumes or affirms that it is not only light that was good when he created it, but even darkness was good. So if God is calling darkness good just as well as light is good, I don't want to argue with him. But in our lives, we don't want darkness. If God says he's the one who created light, I mean, uh, day and night, darkness and light, it means that there is a place for every one of them. It means that we cannot just say, I cannot just embrace the day. Now, imagine it, Mayowa, that we are embracing just the day. We don't want the night. Now it's night here. It's night, like 9.30 here at night. And it's dark everywhere here. But we only want the day. But God said he's the one who created the two. It means he has a purpose. Both for the day and for the night. And the purpose that he has for the two of them is important. So I don't think that only success is good in life. That's what I used to believe. But I've come to a place of maturity where I now know that both success and failures are good. Both success and failures are working for us, for our, own good, for our good. Just like both light and darkness are working for our good. Just like, okay, for example, can you, just, can you imagine that we will assume that only day is good. Only the daylight we embrace. And that uh, we don't, we, 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 just like take one country. Let's say one country says we embrace only the daylight. We reject darkness. Then you will never be able to sleep. And tell me what will happen to you if you say you will never sleep. You just like day. You hate darkness. You hate night. And you will never sleep. You just open your eyes like this so that you never, so that you never see darkness. You will not last for long. That is how the whole world operates. Now, we say some people fail because the question is saying, what would you have to, what measure would you like to take or will you take so that you will not fall or so that, you know, something bad will not happen to you, not fail or fall like others who have fallen? Well, but what you don't know is, and what I don't know is, we don't know which one is good or better. The ones that fail, or the ones that didn't fall. You know, there are some people that are falling, and we think that's bad news for them. And that's bad news that they are falling. Who knows? Maybe it's not quite as bad as we're thinking. I know people who, who fell, like for example, Jim Baker. There used to be a, an American evangelist they called Jim Baker. He, he was the one that started, the, you know, the leading Christian television in America, Christian television. They used to call it PTN, PTL, I think, PTL. Jim Baker, he used them. And he, they used to, another guy that fell also, Jim Swaggart. And uh, so this man, but Jim Baker himself, he actually went to prison after he fell. He was building, building a very huge complex with the biggest Christian uh, entertainment center in the world. I think it was going to be called the Heritage Center or something. So this man fell uh, you know, and he had a very bad fall because, the, you know, he was exposed and then he was taken to prison and all that. But after he came back, he says that he believed that this was, was the greatest thing that could happen to him. He wrote a book, I, I Was Wrong is the name of the book, and I read it. He said, God had mercy of him. His fall was, a mercy, was an act of mercy. His fall was an act of love, an act of kindness. His fall was the greatest thing that could happen to him. But everybody else thought that his fall was the, was the greatest calamity or tragedy that could happen to him. But because God knows what we don't know. God sees the details that we don't see. God, 
uh, knows the hidden things of the heart. While we were celebrating him, maybe he had already fallen before the eyes of God a long time ago. And because God wanted to save him and God wanted to um, protect him, God exposed him and God allowed him to go to prison. And by that, by so doing, he saved him ultimately. And now he's back in ministry again. Now, you know, he's, very, he's a very fulfilled man. And so, uh, you know, who says that only good things are good? Some things that we think are bad, they're actually good. So bad and something that we say fall, bad, negative or darkness, some of those things are at the service of God. Some of these things are at the service of God. God uses them to accomplish his will. God uses darkness. God uses bad things. God uses uh, even Satan to accomplish his will. For example, when God wanted to accomplish, I mean, wanted to demonstrate his will through the life of Job, he allowed him to fall, what we call fall. He allowed him to be tempted. He allowed bad things to happen to him. But the fact that those bad things happened to Job did not mean that Job was a sinner or it, it was a bad thing. It was only in our eyes that was it a bad thing. But yes, it was, they were bad experiences. But ultimately, in the eyes of God, those things were some of the greatest things that ever happened to Job. And not just to Job, some of, some of those things are some of the greatest things that uh, happened in the Bible. For example, if bad things have not happened in my family, my three brothers died in six months, I wouldn't have been who I am today. I wouldn't have been a preacher today. In fact, our whole family wouldn't have been born again today. I wouldn't have been in Russia today for sure. Because those my brothers were up there. So we don't even know what is bad yet. Because some things that we think are really bad, who know who says that they are bad? Maybe they are not as bad as we think. Maybe it is in our own eyes that they are bad. Maybe in God's eyes they are not bad after all. Can you imagine Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? When I was a young kid, when I was a Christian, I was a young Christian boy in the school, in the in the, in the church. I used to pity Jesus. Oh, why should they kill him? Such a nice person. If they had, if he had not killed him now, if he had not died, the world would have been a better place. Oh, things would have been bad. I mean, things would have been good. Well, who said it was bad that Jesus was killed? For an ordinary man, for, it's for our own mind and senses, that's exactly what we think. We just want things to be one way, to be one dimensional, to be positive. But the, both the positive and negative energy work for the purposes of God. So uh, Jesus was killed, but that evil thing that happened, that bad thing, so-called bad thing that happened, is one of the greatest things that have actually happened. That was supposed to be bad, but it's actually the greatest thing. So, who could tell what is bad or what is good? At the end of the day, that was a good thing. At the end of the day, it was a good thing. So now somebody could look and say, what about Judas? Judas was a bad person. He betrayed Jesus. Well, maybe. But maybe he fulfilled his purpose. Maybe that was his purpose. <laughs> You know, the, the Bible says in Timothy that there are some um, that there are some vessels that are for honor, and there are some vessels that are not for honor. I used when I was younger. I used to say, "Father, I want to be a vessel for honor, only vessel for honor. Use me as a vessel for honor." But God has to use other vessels also, and He was saying, in a big house, there are different vessels. There are some vessels that are visible. There are some vessels that are serving the king. There are some vessels that are, you know, very conspicuous. <laughs> conspicuous. And there are some that are inconspicuous. And uh, uh, I was always praying, God, I want to be the vessel for honor. I want to be the conspicuous vessel. I want to be the vessel of gold and silver. But then, so what, who, which will be, who will play the role of the vessel, the, the cup? Who will play the role of the glass? Who will play the role of the table? Who will play the role? Every, somebody has to play their own role. And who says it's bad? So, you know, uh, so if, if you say some people fall, who say that I'm doing better than those people who fall? Even right now. Maybe the people who fell actually have done better than me. 
or they are the ones that are that are doing better that they fell because for every person that fell it is a lesson for others not to fall so the fall of one is actually the blessing for much more as a matter of fact there will be some individuals that must fall so as because it is only through their fall that they will fulfill their purpose and it is only through their fall that they will become greater blessing to the world When, they, they saw, when Jesus healed the man that was blind, the people who were thinking just like me and you now, the Pharisees, they came to Jesus and said, who was a sinner? How could he be born, born, born blind? If he was born blind, it means either he was a sinner or his parents were sinners. So who was a sinner? And Jesus said, nobody was a sinner. So the, Jesus had been trying to teach us this thing. Jesus understands. Jesus understands. Jesus understands. See, no, he was not a sinner. And his parents were not, not sinners. But I have done this for him to be blind even. So that I will bring forth the glory of God. So the glory of God was even that the fact that he was blind. Through his blindness, the glory of God was being, going to be revealed more than if he was not blind. <laughs> Just like Nick Vujic. Through his, uh, you know, lameness, incapacity, you know, uh, dis disability, God's glory was going to be manifested more than if we were having legs and hands. So to say that I am better off or I and you are better off just because we didn't fall, that is not to understand God. You don't know what lesson or what, what wisdom of God is hidden in everybody that has fallen. So, for example, uh, when after the uh, scandal with uh, Apostle Suleiman, uh, I did a video. And if you see the way the people of uh, the disciples of that apostle came after me, in fact, I had to close down the comment section of my video, of my YouTube. Because they came after me strong. How could you say that uh, it is good for him? I mean, that it's, you know, it's not a bad thing that that happened. In fact, when a man of God falls, it's a good thing. There's a good in it as well. It's not just bad. We don't just see the bad. The reason we think it's bad is because we only want to see things positive. We just want to see the positive things. It's just like only having the positive and the electricity without the negative. But, but I, was, I gave a whole speech on that. On that, because I have been accused of that as well. I've been accused of, you know, you know, the same sexual assault or something like that. Only in my case, there were no living people, just the articles. But yeah, but it doesn't really matter. You know, we must be willing to embrace both good and bad. We must be willing to know that in life there will be different challenges. In fact, as a matter of fact, if you don't, you know, I like this school of thought that says. I never fail. I don't even believe, I don't like to use that word fall, that a man of God fall, fell or somebody has fallen. To fall means to turn your back on God, not to make a mistake or to fall, to, to, to sin. If, any, if we are talking about sinning or making a mistake, then every one of us falls every day. We all fall every day. So I hate that word, I hate that terminology because it stig 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 stigmatizes people. We all will fail, we all fail. So, uh, to say that, uh, you know, somebody fell or something, it, it, it's derogatory. All of us fall in that sense, but we all miss mistakes. But the real thing that I believe is that I can never fall. And I don't fall. Even though I make mistakes, I could sin, I could make mistakes, I am imperfect. But because every one of the things that everybody calls falls, everything that people say is a mistake or fall, I know that I never fail. I will never fail. Even when I fall down physically or I make a mistake or I stumble, it is still not failure for me. Because either I grow as a result of it or I learn new, new principles or I learn the way not to do it. Or I learn, I discover better ways of doing things. So even when I fail, even my failure is not a failure for me. When I fall or when I fail, I don't ever fail. Because if the process of failure is the, one of the most important things that could happen to you in life. 
In fact, as a matter of fact, our progress that we have today, our human progress today, is as a result of failure. It is only because people fail that we are where we are today. If, you know, Thomas Edison had not failed a thousand times, he wouldn't have invented the ball. If uh, the, the Wright brothers had not, and people before them had not failed, uh, you know, thousands of times, you know, we wouldn't have had planes today. You know, failure is one of the greatest secrets of life. Failures are one of the greatest powers of life. Failures are some of the greatest wisdom that, that, in that God has given to humanity. So, but when we begin to uh, de derogate, de derogatorically uh, relate to failure, when we, to, when we uh, is it derogate, we say? Derogate. Yeah, when we derogate failure, when we put it down, when we look at, at it, when we look at it as negative and bad, we don't know that in that failure is one of the reasons why our civilization is even alive. It's only because people, for example, if people had not been barren, there would not be cure for barrenness. And the ideas of well, V, what about the tube and putting something, people IVF. have IV, IVF. IVF, wouldn't have been discovered. So is it a good thing or bad thing that people were barren? It's just thanks to it that other people are having that. If there had not been, you know, problems with uh, delivery and but there would not be cesarean uh, session. And so everything that we are, in fact, the only reason any disease could be cured today is because somebody first sick of it before or died of it. It is only because of the epidemics and the viruses that have happened all the over here. That's why we have all the vitamins and the sick. And the, you say every problem carries in its in its own self a solution. It does on the on the basis of, the, uh, of which we have uh, what do you call it? Insulin. Well, what what you the, no? They inject you when you are a child. Immuniz immunization. The principle of immunization is to take that bacteria that they are trying to immune you from. It is the same disease, the same bacteria that they take the cure for. It is the bacteria for that disease that they put in you first. So that it doesn't, I mean, uh, uh, that disease doesn't you know, infect you anymore. So that is the principle of immunization. It is the disease, it is the problem. Whatever problem it is that we have today that pushes us to a get greater solution. It is because of the problem of darkness that we have been able to come up with electricity. It is darkness, therefore, that has given us electricity. It is the problem of transportation that has given us the, 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 the lack of transportation that has given us the idea of plane and train and, you know, all kind of things program we all look to play. So what is failure? Failure is like darkness and light. Failure is like day and night. Failure is part of what God uses to make the world a better place and to make us to function. In fact, if you had not failed, Mayo, Ma Ma I'm looking at you, you, if you had not had challenges where you live in England, you wouldn't have been here today. If everything had just been good, 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 you wouldn't have discovered your calling. You would have discovered your potential. You would have been for, you, you would have even, you know, maybe you wouldn't have even been placing God today. You know, it is if not because of problems that we all encountered in life, some of us would have been saved in the first place. We would have been born again. So who tells who told you then that you know fall or failure is bad? So before I would have given you evidence and proofs that. I am not going to fall and I'm not going to fail. But nobody can secure himself. You don't even know what God has written for you in your own plan. Maybe it is God's will that I will even fall. Maybe it is God's will that I will make some mistakes so that I will be able to become a better person. Look at David. If David had not fallen, we would have known that God could be a God of mercy and a God of second chance. If David had not committed what he committed, we wouldn't have had Solomon in the first place. And see how much blessing that has been to the whole world. If Paul had not been a killer and a persecutor of the church, he wouldn't have had Paul today. So who told you that, you know, what is bad is bad? It depends on how you look at it. I used to think that it was bad that I grew up in the family that I grew up in. I used to envy other families. 
Now they are envying me. Those same family. Because it is the seed of the bad family, of the bad things that happened to me when I was young. It is those bad experiences that form me to be who I am today. In those families, they never had those bad experiences, so they couldn't become me. Thank you, sir. Wow, guys. That was our answer and, and more. I couldn't believe the answer that DS has given. I know I've said this a few times, but really, was, were you expecting that type of answer? This is an amazing um, experience. Just to sit here and listen to this really humbles me. And I think maybe this is why over the last few months I have been smiling almost <laughs> <Non -stop>. <laughs> unstoppable <laughs> because I'm discovering something, you know, about life about purpose, about just being human. And, you know, I'm really grateful. So, guys, let me summarize for you in case um, you didn't get all that. There's a lot of things said. The most important thing is that this is a video recording and you can listen later. But in the meantime, let me just tell you this. The question which was asked is, how can Dr. Sunday prevent uh, not falling in a nutshell, prevent not falling like other people have? And Dr. Sunday gave this amazing answer that falling is not, or failing is not, uh, it's part of the plan of God. It's part of the tools that God uses. But before he said that, he started with the fact that God, um, that he's going to give an answer that he wouldn't have given before. But because of getting older and maturity, he's come to an understanding, he's come to more wisdom that failing, falling is part of this plan that God has that God has for us and it, even though something is bad in life doesn't necessarily in our views or in our eyes does not mean that it's bad in God's eyes God created both good and bad he talked about the vessel in the Bible that God had both good and bad uh, vessel and God created that for a reason he also talks about light and dark darkness you know if there's no darkness then there wouldn't be day and also, how would you live with all daylight without no darkness? You know, you would run mad. I know you would. <laughs> I've had times that I didn't sleep for like 24 hours. You know, I almost put my eyes out because it was so challenging for me. So um, that's all plans of God. God doesn't do anything by chance. Even the negative things that happens is part of his plan. So that's what we need to know. And he, talk, he gave so many examples. He gave examples of uh, example of Thomas Edison. If he hasn't failed so many times, and then eventually the, the thousandth time, you, you wouldn't have had electricity right now. You'd probably still be living in the dark. He talked about sicknesses and illnesses. When people are ill, that's when they take their blood or they take the, uh, the problem that's happening to them. Somebody died for you to be alive, to be able to live for... Um, even something as simple as malaria, tuberculosis, you know, there were people that were dying so many years ago because of that bad thing that happened to them and the doctors were able to take their, their samples, they were able to create uh, medication or something to prevent those things. So Let them share this. Yes. So guys, please, please share this. So the nutshell of this is that it's important that we, as we understand that both good and bad are good in the eyes of God and they're for God's use. They have their role. Yes. They, they have their place. They have their role and their place. And the ultimate for me was that it was bad that Jesus was dying. And, you know, even if you watch Passion of Christ, you will cry and cry and cry. But if not because of that, you will not be saved. You probably <laughs> wouldn't be here. You know, and he gave another example which is related to all of us. You know, I as a Christian, I only got closer to God when I feel disillusioned with life, which was bad. I was almost, you know, I don't understand what life is about. And that's when I got closer to God. And that's probably the best thing that's happened, ever happened to me for that bad to happen. And also, if I'd been enjoying London and, you know, loving everything that's happening in my life, I wouldn't even watch Dr. Sunday. I would just be enjoying. So I do like the bad things that even God put in me that makes me repel the life that I was living to want a better life for myself. So that bad experience where I was getting upset and angry and feeling lonely, 
um, and then feeling like I need to do something about my life. That's what led me here. And here I am. Mm -hmm. So there's so much too bad that we don't understand. And it's just such a peaceful answer that is, is, is covers everything in life. If you can understand this, you will not judge people, you will not judge yourself, and you will not condemn other people. As Dr. Sunday, when he gives answers, sometimes some people misread him and say he's condemning this or that. He's just giving an honest answer. But this also should confirm to you that it doesn't con condemn it good or bad. Okay? So, I hope you will go back and listen to this. Share this so that you can have it on your page as well. And you can listen to it without having to go a few steps further to YouTube. But if you prefer YouTube, which is my favorite, is Sunday at the Large Official. There are hundreds of um, hundreds of titles that you can go into and listen over and over and over again. So, thank you. So, I think we've exhausted that. You spend about 40 minutes on that. <laughs> and so, so, I'm but going you, to move you, on. You don't want to uh, see what people wrote about yes, it? Yes, I, yeah, I do. I do. Okay, no, no, ahead. I'm interested. I'm interested in go what ahead. you guys say. And I also want to say thank you for the person that asked that question. Because, you know, the now... The person that like, answered that question, that, is ask, not, is, ask, that, asked that question is not here. Yeah, well, I will make sure that I send it to the person. You know the person? <laughs> yes. Ooh. Uh, uh, you don't want to. I don't want okay, to tell okay, you. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, I will send it to the person. But how do you know the person is not here, sir? No, mm. I'm just because it was. It's not. It was not a question of today. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Rans Musin says you're really growing a sharp mind and mem memory sister okay <laughs> thank you very much you know you're so right about that in terms of memory i have to because you know if you mess around here you will be told and you don't want to be told <laughs> you have to get a sharp mind so yes thank you very much you've noticed that i'm getting a sharp mind thank you very much uh some uh okay let's go move on okay hold on hold on I have to be careful with this before I click on something. I shouldn't. The best and most significant answer to this concept of human frailty I've ever heard Ooh. this person is saying. Eminike said. Yeah, wow. and that's why that's why it is wrong for pastors in Africa to just be saying because you are born again or because you come to their church that uh, everything just has to be perfect. And that they get, you know, if you go to church, if you go to their church, that they are anointed, their anointing will protect you, and they, their oil will protect you, or their, but their oil doesn't protect everybody. Their oil and their mantle or whatever they have what doesn't protect everybody. People still have accidents, people still get killed, people still die, who are members of their churches. What is, I mean, why, what's God trying to tell us? He's trying to tell us that. No. Right. Well, as, as long as you're on this side of the ocean, as long as you're on this side of the of, 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 of on earth, we are all frail. We are all we are all fallible. We all need him. We need to just depend on him, and we need to submit to him. We need to uh, believe in him and trust him, rather than trusting some formulas. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um. Few more comments says. Inkem said, you are just speaking my language, sir. Wow, wow. so profound. That's Uforma. Um, somebody's asking another question in relation to this. Okay. He said, uh, can, we, can we then say every problem is poignant with solution and every solution... I can't see the but, full question. Yeah, yeah, but I've answered that question. Yes. Yes. Every question is pregnant with an answer. Yes. That's the when I spoke about the immunization. Gen yes. Yeah, I've answered. Immunization, diseases, people yeah. that died, so that you yeah. live now. Yeah. And jumping and dancing, no, that's Stella that is saying that. That's <laughs> just an awesome answer. <laughs> jumping and dancing because right. of the answer. You have the comments somewhere? You didn't bring your other something to, to see the comments. Ufoma said, no man is infallible. Yeah. That's true, she said, she Sandra said, wow, she Joyce. She needs to see the comments, all the comments. She no, no, she, uh, on Skype, she said they are, they said you have the comments on Skype. No, I have questions on Skype. Comments, comments. You're right, DSA says, Del, Del, sir. so, so right. Absolutely, failure gives us an opportunity to begin 
again. In fact, it enables us. That's all I can see. She's bringing the camera. Thank you. True, sir. That's booming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for... Uh... Just like people, for example, say in Africa especially, that some people are uh, uh, barren. And, and then people are making that to be a tragedy. And they really begin to cry and to pray. So they go everywhere. They go up, and on, you know, up from north to south to say they are barren. We must have a child. Do you notice that despite all the prayers, there is no church in Nigeria or in the old world where they don't have somebody who is barren? No matter how anointed that man of God is. In fact, even the man of God himself in his own family, they might be having the same problem. So no matter how can God allows that, so that we just know that these things are not the, you don't have a panacea to life. You don't have a panacea to life and say that, no, I will not be barren. I will not be. It's, who says that the person who is barren is worse than you? As a matter of fact, maybe it's the person that is more fortunate. So why should you be crazy about some presumptuous living and uh, standard that you have given yourself? Be happy with God. Know that, trust God, that God is right. Don't why should you believe that it's Satan that's making you not to have child or children? Why should you believe that it's Satan that is behind it? Why don't you just trust God? Just, just live your life and enjoy your life. Or who told you that people who are married are better off than people who are not married? I mean, he's presumptuous. And it's a fallacy. Why don't just, why, why the Bible says that any state where you find yourself, enjoy it. Glorify God for it. Any state. Any state is good state. Especially if you have prayed about it before. And if you have fasted, you have everybody has prayed, nothing is changing. Begin to rejoice. Trust God and know that you are having the best day. And don't let anybody pity you. Thank you, sir. Let me just read a few more comments. The one I was reading before says, Absolutely, failure gives us an opportunity to be, begin again. In fact, it enables us to look back and rise above the odds in life. True, sir. True, sir. There is always good in the midst of bad. It's all in our mindsets and perceptions. All things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his original intention. The son of Bathsheba was Solomon, the wise king. <laughs> his background did not matter. <laughs> This is to a Bible scholar. <laughs> <laughs> Failure is an opportunity to perform, to for performance review. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think if Judah didn't commit suicide but repented afterward, he would have been a hero for betraying Christ. Okay, those are good comments. Thank you, guys. Keep your comments and questions coming. Um, I know we are now, yes, we've just gone over an hour. Sir, so let me ask one more question, if you don't mind. Uh, this one is about calling, sir. And uh, I wouldn't ask it, but it's related to you. It says, Pastor, if someone had the same encounter you had when you were 19, does it mean the calling is similar or same? I don't know what this Maybe they are talking about Jesus appearing to me uh, in the night. That doesn't mean that it's the same encounter. I mean, it, it, it doesn't mean that it's the same calling. It could mean is if God is showing you the same thing, though, that you are, you see yourself preaching, yes, it could be the same calling. But then for you to have the same result, you must work on yourself the same way that Pastor Sunday has worked on himself. Okay, that's a straightforward answer that, um, although it wasn't a clear question about calling, so it may be experience of when he came to Belarus, 
when he was 19 or experience of life or knowledge of Christ, I don't know. But in any case, Dr. Sunday answered that if you saw Christ the same way that he did and gave you the same um, scenario or the same experience, then possibly it could be. But you have to work as hard to achieve the same result. You can't say he's giving you this, this same calling and you would achieve exactly the same without putting the hard work in it. So this is just about you working on yourself rather than worrying about if it was the same calling. If you develop yourself, then, you know, that's the, what's more important. Okay. Can we ask one more question? We've passed, we've gone over our time. But I can ask, can I ask, sir? Please, if you, okay. if you need to. Sir, do you know you are a superstar for Jesus? Question. <laughs> I don't know that. I would have liked to. I like to. I like people to argue. They are, they, I like people to argue their their statements. To you know to you know you've got to prove it. You've got to base it on something. What is the what is the argument? What is the foundation of you saying that? You have to base that on something. Yeah. Okay, let me finish the question, but I think you've answered the second part. There's a three part to this. There's three parts to this. So the second part is, are you happy and do you feel that you have accomplished all that you were sent to do on earth? This person probably wasn't around yesterday because... Why should I be happy about it? See? The person said that, do you, are you happy? And For do what? You, okay, let me start again. Okay. I said, do you know you are a superstar for Jesus? Okay. Are you happy and do you feel that you have accomplished all that you, have, you are sent to do on earth, apart from the Nigerian project? Do you ever think in your life back in Nigeria that you will become what you are today? Okay. First of all, I'm not only a superstar before mine, in the eyes of men, yet. talk less of from, 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 from the eyes of God. And men's standards are much more lower than God's standard. I'm not even a superstar by world standard. Uh, I'm not even a world standard. There are a lot of people in this world who don't even know who Pastor Sunday is. They don't even know I exist. I'm not even a superstar in Christianity. I'm not in the top 10 or in the top 3. Of the superstars in Christianity, at least people who are recognized in the eyes of men. I'm not even on television. I'm not even anywhere. I'm just doing my own little thing here. I've answered that question yesterday that I think I've only done 5% of what I can do. And I pray I will be able to do the rest of the 95% that are still awaiting me. Okay, there's a third part, sir. You have to say it. The third part is that do you ever think in your life back in Nigeria that you will become what you are today? No, there is no way I could have thought that I would become who I am today because of what I am. I knew I would be successful, I knew I would be great. I just sensed that deep. I didn't even know it was going to happen. I thought it was, I was going to become a professor, a doctor in philosophy or philosophy. And I was going to become a lecturer in the university and make a lot of money. But I never knew that uh, I was going to become famous and really be a solution provider like this. Uh, I uh, never thought I could touch a whole nation and that I could be known by, by a whole country, not just a whole country, but by half of the world. And by many countries in the world that I could touch and shake a hand in a nation and the destiny of nations could depend on me. I never, I never even saw people who do, who do that. I never even knew that that could happen. I only knew you had to just have the best thing you could do to be like that was to be, just be a president or something. And I was not even thinking in that sense. So, um, yeah, but, but still, that's just nothing right now compared to what I know. I know that uh, I'm nowhere near where I need to go, where I need to be, and where I'm going. Okay, sir. So I think you've answered this before, but um, can I just ask that what drives you? Because, you know, if you don't know that you would get to this level, even though it's, not, it's nothing to you, you're not the superstar this person is 
um, saying that you you are for Jesus, you are, but um, because you said you're God's standard, which absolutely is true, God's standard is not the same as he, our standard on earth. So what is it that drives you to do what you do, you know, in the nations, especially individual, what you're doing, what is your driver or motivation? Look what Christ did for me, first of all. I was lost. He found me. I was guilty. He forgave me. I was to be punished. He had mercy on me. I was supposed to carry the punishment for my sin. He carried it on his, on his, on his, on his own body and gave me his own liberty. He gave me freedom. I was supposed to be dead in my sin. He took away my sin and gave me his own life. I'm supposed to be born in hell. He gave me life eternal. I'm obliged to him. What drives me is my understanding of redemption. Redemption means something to me, deeper than what it means to most people. I own him my life. I don't want to live my life because I don't have my life anymore. The life that I had was dead in sin. And the life that I have now is the life that he gave me in exchange for my own dead life that he took over on himself. He took my condemned life and gave me his own perfect life. The life that I live now, I must live for him, for the Son of God, who loved me so much that he gave his life for me. I think about that every day. I remember it every second of the day. Well, maybe not every second, but every day. I defy myself because of that. I recharge myself for that. And I must make sure that I live the way he would have liked to live his own life. If he were here, in my place. I'm living in his place. And I want to bring him all the glory. The way he would have brought himself or his God, his Father the glory if he had been living in my place I am living his life I must live his life in a way that he deserves that life should be lived for him that he would have lived when, if he were here in my place because I am living his life I must live it in a worthy way of him who gave me that life thank you sir guys I think we should close here because everything that could have been said is been said. This answer, this last one, is very sobering, but it's absolutely divine. You know, what is his driver? The person that asked the question first, which was that why um, is, that Dr. Sunday is a superstar for Jesus and is well known, and with that in mind, is he happy about it? And also, uh, does he ever do? Do you ever think of life back in Nigeria that he would be this way? If he ever thought when he was a child that he would be this way, so the answer started with, you know, he's not a superstar, and being a superstar, our standard on earth is not God's standard. So his focus is on God's standard, not on the world standard of what a superstar is. And besides, that doesn't even matter at all. And in terms of him being happy, it's just a, he's just doing what he needs to do. So it's not just about joy, joy, joy. It's about just doing what must be done for Christ. And then um, the third part is he never envisioned that he would be what he is now when he was back in Nigeria. So thank you for that and for that question. Um, but I then ask another question is that what's the driver then? Because if you don't have this vision that this is how you're going to be, but you're working towards this, so how, do, how what drives you? What's your motivation? And that answer was so deep. 
um, in a few minutes you just kind of you know took everybody's heart because I can see you guys with your hearts and love sending to him which was that it was Jesus he gave reasons Jesus died for him Jesus loved him Jesus took his sins Jesus um, what Jesus couldn't do he wants to do he wants to be Jesus here on earth he understand what it means what redemption means what he took to be redeemed who what what, what it took from the person that redeemed him, the God, the Jesus that redeemed him, what it took for him to be able to do that. He has a deep understanding, profound. So that really humbles me this evening. I hope that you will go back and watch this. I certainly will. Uh, we've, you've asked some great questions today and he's giving amazing answers. This has been a great evening. I appreciate you all. Please don't forget the contest. I've posted the contest detail on all the groups that DSA is on. So DSA groups, DSA Live, DSA UK, DSA uh, Family Chat, uh, DSA 50, it's all on there and it's also on this page. And don't forget, YouTube is your friend, especially Dr. Sunday Adelaja's page or channel, which is Sunday Adelaja Official. Check YouTube out. And if you don't like YouTube because you get other things coming up, then go ahead and check out his blog. It's sundayadelajablog.com. And if you're interested in the Nigerian Transformation Project, then add slash Nigeria and you get a page where it tells you all about the Transformation Project. We'd love for you to join us. There's a question about Nigerian Transformation Project. I would ask that tomorrow. But it's been an amazing, humbling, enlightening, wisdom, everything that I can never think of, both good and bad, you know, I take it on, so, and I even appreciate it more now, because good is good, bad also is good, can you believe that, I'm going to think about it, and enjoy all the bad things that happens, so guys, I thank you again for this evening, please join us tomorrow evening, starting from 7 with the Russian, and then we go, you're Russian, Ukrainian, because a lot of them are Ukrainian actually, guys, let me tell you. And then secondly, we would have this, which is starting at 9 p.m. Ukraine. So the first one will be 7 p.m. Ukrainian time, and then 9, 9 p.m. Uh, Ukrainian time. So join us tomorrow. I hope to see you all and more people. Tell your friends and let your friends tell their friends to come on this channel. So thank you or this page to watch us. So see you. Thank you. Bye.